Hello everyone, so today I'm finally making my score 1 example solves video. These solves will be quite advanced, so I'd recommend them for solvers under 35 seconds, but others may be able to pick up a few things as well. The scrambles will be in the description, and let's just get right into it. So for this first scramble, I have this case that I really don't like, but I'm just going to use normal reduction, pair up these two with these two, like this, and then attach this L to the scallop and then finish off the cube shape but right here I'm going to start looking ahead for my corner orientation I know that once I finish the cube shape this corner will move over here this one will stay in the same spot so now I just have to look for two more white pieces which here makes it perfect for me to see my entire corner orientation solution so I know that this piece after the slice will go here this piece will go here, so I'll just have to do a U2 and then insert this corner up here. So there, and then U2, like that, to finish off corner orientation. And then here I have this case. And here I see I have two blocks. I have this huge block on the bottom and this one block for um, from the G perm on top, meaning I have a U perm on top and an adjacent on bottom after this alg. And then here's just my U prime adjacent case. So this case is a lot better. Um, I'm just going to attach this L to this scallop like this, and then bring up the line, and then finish off the cube shape like that. And at this point, I already know where all my white corners are. They're on the D layer as of now. So I'll just do a slice to bring these two up. And then I'll do U2D2 to bring up the rest of them. And I have this case. And I see I have a Y perm on the bottom. And I see I have a case with parity on top. So I'm not going I'm not going to bother flipping or canceling into flipping the equator because I know I can do it um, during edge permutation. Because I don't know this case, it the adjacent U perm case. Uh, I know the U perm adjacent case, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two opposite swaps, one on the U layer and one on the D layer, while flipping the equator so I can force a case that I know. So this scramble is actually really nice. I can see until my corner orientation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up over here to make a shield and square. And then I'm going to influence both of these white corners so that they'll end up on the U layer after an odd number of slices, in this case three. This corner is going to come over here and this is just going to stay in its spot. So I'm going to go like this to get a shield. Instead of going like this, I can do a D prime and then track um, more pieces, bring this up and this will come down and then I can just finish the corner orientation like that. Then I have this edge orientation case. And the F perm is one of the cases where you can solve the corner permutation differently to force different direction U perms. So if you solve it along this slice, you're going to get a counterclockwise U perm. And if you solve it along this slice, you're going to get a clockwise U perm. So I'm going to solve it this way to get counterclockwise. And I'm going to get the same U perm by breaking up all three of these blocks from the J perm so I can get a better EP, and the AUF would be a U. So for this case, I'm going to match up this line to form a scallop and this pair of edges, and then I'm gonna solve the scallop kite from the back. And here, I already see all my corners. So after the slice, this, is, this bar will stay in the same place. This will move down, and this corner will be down here, and I'll just take two slices to finish off the um, corner orientation, like that. And then I have edge orientation. And here's another one of those cases. Here I have the F perm. So this time, the opposite after the J perm will be on the left side, on the U layer. So I want it to be on the right side on the D layer. So I'm going to preserve this edge by misaligning the D layer like so. And even though I'll still have to flip the equator, I would still much rather prefer this U perm than the other one, or this set of U perms than the other one. And then U, D2. 
So this is another cube shape where I can see basically all of my corner orientation solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to preserve this side of the square by not moving it at all during the cube shape except for this one comma zero. And then I'm going to solve the cube shape from the back because I see I have these two corners here in the front. And then I'm also going to do everything using D moves so I don't affect these pieces. So what I'm going to do is like this, which would pair those up, and then finish off the cube shape and then D2 slice so I can get the corners. And then I have this piece. And the A perm is not one of the cases where you can preserve blocks differently to get different direction U perms. They, preserving the blocks either way will give you the same direction U perm. So I'm just going to solve it like this and it ends up giving me the same direction U perm from preserving the R perm on the bottom and there will be no AUF and I'll just have to finish with the D2. This case is pretty nice too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match this pair with that, like this, and then scallop kite. And then last corner. And then now I already see that all my corners are done, so I'm just looking for edge permutation. Um, so I have a W perm on top and a U perm on bottom. I don't know this case, so I'll just reduce it with an opposite opposite, and then U perm adjacent. Uh, U2, D2. This case, I'm going to match up this with this L to create this shape and then finish it off this and I see three corners I'm just looking for the last one um, which didn't really help um, so yeah now I have this case and now I see I have parity because I have one swap on the top and then I have an R perm and I know it will be an opposite swap on top and a U perm on the bottom which I don't know the alg for either so I'll just do adjacent adjacent to force the U perm on top and have an adjacent on bottom, which is a case that I know, and then U2, D2. So this is shield, shield, and typically this would be a really easy cube shape to solve at only three slices, but I'm going to talk a little bit about um, cube shape parity or CSP, and that's when you have a reference scheme which would serve as your solve state, and then you um, count the number of swaps or cycles that your edges and corners have, and you identify if there's parity, and then you solve it during cube shape um, after your inspection time. So I'm going to start off with my reference scheme. So the U layer is all white, and the D layer is all yellow for um, these colors. And then the front isolated corner of the shield is um, green, red, so white, green, red, and the same for the bottom. And then the rest of the corners go in the correct permutation, so uh, green, red, red, blue, blue, orange, orange, green, and same for the bottom. And the edges go red, blue, orange, green. So I'm just going to give an example memo. I'll start off with the corners. So this piece, it has to go here, so one, so one, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, and then that would come back over here. So there's an even number of stops in the corners. Now for edges, I'll start over here. So one, zero, one, and that's my buffer. So zero, one, zero, one, which means that there's parity in the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an odd number of swaps by swapping these two corners, one swap, these two corners, two swaps, and these two corners, three swaps. So now if I solve the shield shield normally, I shouldn't have parity. So that's cube shape, that's the corner orientation, edge orientation, and yeah. So I have a V perm on top and an A perm on bottom meaning that there's no parity, so I'll just do that. And then I have the opposite direct or same direction U perms, and I have a U2, D2 after the ALG.
So for this cube shape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down and then I'm going to form the kite in the back of the cube and then solve the cube shape from the back. And I saw this corner would come up here and then, yeah. Then I have this edge orientation. I see uh, both layers have adjacent swaps and both of them will force an adjacent adjacent and I'll have to flip the equator after the alb. So. And then U2, D2. So it's this case again. So I'm just going to bring this line down to form that. And then scallop kite. And I see this corner. It's over here. So I just have to do U2 and then bring the corner up. And then I have this edge orientation case. I have an R perm on the bottom and um, parity on the top. So, there. So I have an O perm on top. I'll do an adjacent and I'll flip the equator with that. And then I'll do um, U perm adjacent. And then U. So for this case, I'm going to take this left line and then attach it with this. And then bring that adjacent, or bring those that pair of edges down and then finish um, scallop scallop corner orientation and here I see I have a diagonal swap on the bottom and more specifically a, an E perm and then after the um, end perm to this I'll have a Z perm meaning I have no parity so just two simple adjacent adjacent swaps so I think I'll make this the last one because that's 12 solves. So I'm just going to do this and then scallop kite from the back. And this is something that I might not do in a solve, but it's just something interesting. Just canceling into C, um, corner orientation after edge orientation. So what I mean by that is doing your edge orientation and then bringing your white to the tip or bringing that color to the top if it's swapped already. Yeah. And then here, um, by preserving these four blocks, I know that I'll have um, adjacent adjacent, which makes this solve really easy. So that's it. I hope you learned a few techniques or tricks from this video. A few more things. The first is that I now have a playlist of square one edge permutation executions and I'll leave the link in the description. So you guys can just ask me cases and if I have a good finger trick or a good algorithm, I'll definitely make a short video about it. The second thing is that now that I finally made this score one example solves video, leave some video suggestions in the comments and I'll definitely read them. So thanks for watching, bye.